Greetings today. I want to talk a little bit more about a grand cross that is taking place um, later in the evening on Tuesday, September 10th, around the time that the presidential debate will be taking place. And uh, so I'm recording this video prior to the debate, but looking at the astrological alignments that we have coming up. And uh, in my video for September 10th, I talked about the first quarter moon. I talked about how it is forming a grand cross. This grand cross that it is forming is uh, a sort of a repeat of the grand cross, mutable grand cross we had about a month ago, really about four weeks ago, when the last time the moon was in the middle degrees of Sagittarius. So that was back on August 14th. So we've got a little bit of a repeat of these energies. A grand cross brings challenges, but it also brings choice. I want to break this down and share with you how you can think about these energies and what's going on in the collective because there's a lot of buzz um, about the presidential debate and it's obviously a manifestation of these energies but those energies uh, do manifest in other ways as well so we'll talk about that i'm marina orms here with your astro vibe for wednesday september 11th um interesting date as well here um so you know, honoring one of the biggest tragedies uh, for our nation um, in recent memory. So, um, so with this Grand Cross energy, today, September 11th, the moon is continuing through Sagittarius. Later in the day, it will go into Capricorn. But for most of the day, we have this Sagittarius moon energy that is about beliefs. It is about the story you tell, which another word for that is the narrative, right? And what do we have showing up? but a presidential debate where there is a um, ultimate battle really for the narrative and for who's going to be telling the story and what are our beliefs. And if you have watched some of my videos about uh, the, the astrology and the planetary alignments taking place around the actual election day. Um, I, I will I will share the link to the video that I have for um, the astrology of election day because it really is about a battle over the narrative and what that narrative will be, who is deciding, who is defining who we are as a nation really epic um, kind of stuff. And uh, in a recent video that I had a conversation with my friend Thea Wershing, we were talking about how this time, like not just this day, but this um, year's period, several years period of time that we are in is a repeat. It is a coming full cycle of two major, major big cycles. So one is Pluto coming full circle. Pluto has a 248 year cycle. It is coming full circle from where it was just uh, before and during the American Revolution. Um, that transition from Pluto in Capricorn to Pluto in Aquarius, where we are right now, the last time that happened was um, during and just after the American Revolutionary War. And just that whole struggle, right? It was many year time period of a struggle to define a nation, to uh, claim independence and everything that went with that. So we're at a repeat of that cycle. We're also at a repeat of the cycle that <laughs> uh, happened just before the Civil War. So Neptune was last in Pisces just prior to the American Civil War. And so that cycle is coming full circle as well. And so you can see how these energies 
stack up to make this a very significant time. And we can see that reflected in the astrological energies, which, <laughs> you know, uh, there may not be a huge number of us thinking about it from this perspective, but I think it's really a fascinating way because it gives us a sense of the energy and the bigger pictures of the cycles we're in and the importance of this time. So, Okay, so the energies around the election are bring up themes of narrative, telling the story, defining the story, deciding who we are, uh, deciding what we believe, deciding what side we're on, I guess, um, although it really has more to do with uh, finding principles that we really believe in and uh, that we're willing to make our lives about and work for. So that's uh, an important factor in all of this. And interestingly enough, we have um, some of these Jupiter and Gemini energies. So, uh, so part of this grand cross I'm talking about is Jupiter in Gemini, um, as well as the moon opposing Jupiter in the moon being in Sagittarius. And uh, both uh, that opposition between Jupiter and the moon, um, both squaring uh, the sun in Virgo and uh, Saturn in Pisces. So I won't, <laughs> I won't get you lose you in all the technical details. The point is um, that this is a significant moment. So let's talk about um, how we can think about this because we're all about self care here, right? On this YouTube channel, it's what can we do with these energies? Not just, you know, what should we be worried about or when will it end? Which is. Um, uh, not the highest possibility for our ability to work with and use astrology. The highest possibility is to ask ourselves, what can I do with this energy? How does this help me grow? How does this help me step into my full potential? How does this help me think about nourishment for myself and how I can share what I'm good at with the world? So self-care and um, and so what we want to, how we want to think about these energies, first of all, is a grand cross is, is a lot of pressure. It's um, different factors pressing up against one another. And, and so there is pressure to, um, to so there's a, a sense, first of all, of, of discomfort, uh, unease. <laughs> So it can feel uncomfortable. And in general, when we have these kinds of alignments in astrology, we, um, uh, we are being asked. So when we feel uncomfortable, when we, when we don't like the way things are going, when it's frustrating, when it's causing some sort of um, pain or need to question ourselves on some level, um, it's actually asking us to make some decisions about who we are, where we stand, how we are claiming our own needs, how we take care of ourselves. So I want to just frame this energy and, and remind us, remind myself, remind you that we um, have a choice. And so it is, it is not... Um, just watch for the tendency to want to go, oh, this is going to be the answer, right? This is going to solve all the problems. It's not going to be that simple. It's also not going to be the end of the world. Whatever happens, <laughs> and there will be a battle over how the story is told, how the information is conveyed, who believes what. Um, so, so this is an opportunity instead of thinking about this being uh, some sort of way of being rescued or some sort of thing that's going to put a nail in the coffin, right? It's not, it's neither of those things. It, what it is, is it's an opportunity for us to get more clear about what we think, why we think that what words we can use to share and convey and communicate and um, 
show up in conversation, in dialogue with our friends, our neighbors, whoever we may come across. Um, people you might be um, sharing information with, right? So finding the words to uh, describe what it is you believe in and why. So let's think about this time as an opportunity to step more solidly into what we think, why we think that, what is important, why that's important, what we care about, why we care about it. And you know, relating this back to this American history story that that's kind of the backdrop to our times right now, even though we're talking about self-care, um, it might have something to do with how you identify as an American, what it means to be an American. If it, if you are an American, I know some of my uh, audience is in other countries, so you are absolutely welcome, and I'm sure that you're also interested in these energies and what's unfolding. So uh, so we can think about who we are. Uh, maybe if you're from another country, you want to think about America's role in the world and how you relate to that and how um, that matters to you and what you want to say about it finding the right words. So this is an opportunity to, um, to learn, to grow, right? We are in this Virgo moon cycle. So there are opportunities <laughs> for learning and improvement and becoming more perfect, which is what I've been talking about um, here in my daily videos that I post. So um, so definitely um, how we think about things matters and it all relates back to our stress levels, how we need to take care of ourselves. So thinking about this in terms of what do you need, how do you need to take care of yourself so that you can have this time to, to take a step back, get, go, wait a minute, you know, what am I getting swept up into? How do I need to really uh, clarify where I stand, what I think before I am asked to, uh, you know, spew a, a reaction or <laughs> or an off the cuff um, answer, which, you know, it's fine to have those in the moment, but then give yourself that time to reflect. The moon in Sagittarius wants us to see the bigger picture. So that ability to take a step back, ask ourselves, wait a minute, what do, how do I really feel about this? What matters about this? What, what am I um, being asked to think? And how does that compare with uh, what is really important, right? So we need to check back with our, our hearts, our truth, um, think about the people we love, what matters to us for them. Uh, and how we want to show up in our communities. So, uh, so taking that pause, seeing that bigger picture, getting clear about how you feel, getting clear about what you need to say. I really encourage you to take that extra moment before reacting or um, writing off, you know, a social media post or whatever off the cuff. So take that extra time, think about it. Ask yourself what's really important here and maybe what's really going on here, right? Who's who's trying to control what and what is how are they doing that and how am I responding and is it in uh, alignment with my truth or is it in alignment with my reaction to um, you know what someone wants me to think, which is another way of um, manipulation taking place right through through propaganda through disinformation or whatever is coming across so just be aware be take that time to honor your need to get clear before you engage and um and then do so right show up engage and say what you think and listen to what other people think and why because this is really an opportunity to get um into a deeper place of uh clarity for ourselves 
So um, obviously, you know, it's easy to sort of paint this picture with the backdrop of the presidential debate, whatever happens, right? I mean, I mean, we can, I, I look at it as sort of like expect the expected, <laughs> You know, instead of expect the unexpected, expect the expected. Um, we know, we kind of know what the factors are here, the variables. So, so it's not going to tell you anything really that you don't know, but what, what will be um, unfolding is how does the discussion emerge it following that, right? And and how do we participate in that? So anyway, okay, so that shows up in the discussion about the presidential debate. However, this is an energetic thing that's happening. So it could uh, and probably will show up in your life related to other factors that are happening in your life. Um, related to how you feel about yourself, related to this work that you might be doing to uh, discover how you can be more of service, which may or may not be tied with, you know, the destiny of America. I don't know, but but what is true for you and taking that time to connect with um, what really feels right, what really is a path of becoming more solid, more clear, uh, more um, able to engage in constructive and positive and powerful ways uh, through your creative work, through your choices and actions in the world, and through the way that you show up and talk to others, whoever there is in your life that you are engaging with. So um, that is essentially what I have for you today. So tonight, um, let me see, it is nine, no, so let's see, 7.37 p.m. Pacific time that the moon goes into Capricorn. So this um, Grand Cross energy will be most strong uh, Tuesday evening, night, and early morning. Uh, depends on your time zone. I'm on Pacific time. But um, then as the day goes on, when, on Wednesday, uh, the, um, the energy of the Grand Cross sort of begins to wane. And so there's more of the process of integration as the intense part of the pressure um, eases off. So then uh, at 7.37, did I say? <laughs> Pacific time, PM, um, the moon goes into Capricorn. And then we have a shift in energy to get more grounded. This is how we want to think about how we can be constructive helpful, put where we need to put in effort, what we need to do to build, to focus on structures, foundations, planning, strategy, all those good Capricorn things. So we'll talk more about that for uh, Thursday when the moon is in Capricorn all day, but that gives you kind of a, a sense of the energies on Wednesday. And thank you for being here. Thanks for listening um, to me share my, my thoughts with you. And uh, I just find all of this fascinating as a way to see deeper into what's going on in the energies around us. So thanks for being here. I'm Marina Orms. You can learn more about me at astrologyheals.com. I do have an offer right now for a recorded reading, special price, um, and that recorded reading will help you connect with how you can best participate in boosting freedom and democracy and what that looks like for you according to your own chart. So check that out in the description for this video as well as on my website, astrologyheals.com. Thanks so much for being here and subscribing. Check back. I'm here every day with Astrology for Unshakable Self-Care. Bye for now.